Hello everyone, now we will discuss about the lower limb nerve injury. First now we will discuss is about femoral nerve injury. Femoral nerve arises from the nerve root L2, L3 and L4. After arising from L2, L3 and L4, it enters the pelvic floor anterior to the pelvic bone. Near to the iliac crest, it gives branch, the motor branch to the psoas major muscle. Then below that, it gives branch to the iliacus. Number two, then it passes anterior to the hip joint where it gives motor branch to the pectineus and sartorius. It travels medial to the femur bone and at the midpoint of the shaft of the femur, it gives branch to the rectus femoris, vastus medialis and further down near the knee joint, it gives branch to the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. So if there is injury above the iliac crest, all the motor functions of the femoral nerve will be lost. If the injury is below iliac crest, then psoas major may be spared. If the injury is at the level of hip joint, psoas major and iliacus may be spared whereas other muscles may be involved. If it is a shaft of femur fracture which, which may have injured the femoral nerve, then only quadriceps will be impaired. So if the injury is above the iliac crest, then hip flexion as well as knee extension will be lost. The range of motion of hip flexion and knee extension will be reduced. If the injury is below the hip joint, then only quadriceps will be weak. Therefore, hip flexion won't be reduced, whereas knee extension will be reduced. What are the causes for femoral nerve injury? Compression by the inguinal ligament may cause compression of the femoral nerve, entrapment of the femoral nerve. So this is the area where the compression can occur because of the inguinal ligament compressing on the femoral nerve. Pelvic fracture can compress the femoral nerve. It will be a higher nerve injury. So therefore, there may be more muscles involved. Retroperitoneal hematoma also can cause femoral nerve injury. Total abdominal hysterectomy, direct trauma or fracture of the hip and pelvis, tumor presence at the pelvic area, total hip arthroplasty, these all are the common causes for femoral nerve injury. This is just for your knowledge what is hip arthroplasty, it is the replacement of the joint by the artificial joint surfaces. Now again let's refer to the course of the femoral nerve. You can see below the thigh it gives supply to the infrapatellar branch which gives sensory supply to the medial aspect of the knee. Then below that there are three branches which gives supply to the skin on medial side of the leg. Below that it gives sensory supply to the skin on the medial side of the foot up to the ball of the greater toe. These are the sensory branches. One more sensory branch it gives just below the lateral circumference femoral artery. It gives branch to the sartorius below that it gives which is called as intermedial cutaneous nerve of thigh and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. So if it is a higher injury at the level of uh, hip joint or above that then all the sensory supply by the femoral nerve will be involved. If it is below knee joint, if the injury of the femoral nerve is below knee joint, then majority of the motor function will be spared, whereas sensory supply to the medial side of the leg and medial side of the foot will be impaired. So what are the clinical presentations? We have discussed already the motor involvement and the sensory involvement, which are the primary clinical presentations of the nerve injury. Severe pain that begins below the inguinal ligament is one of the clinical presentation. Pain may spread to the distribution of the saphenous nerve. Local tenderness in groin region. Medial leg and calf numbness. Reduced sensation, diminished knee reflex. Uh, knee reflex root value is L2, L3, L4. 
tingling, burning and numbness will be present at the level of L2, L3, L4 dermatome levels. Weakness of hip flexion, knee extension will be present if it is a higher level of femoral nerve injury. Difficulty going upstairs or downstairs, mainly downstairs because you need strength from the, um, you need eccentric strength from the knee extensors that is quadricep muscles. Buckling of the knee that is feeling of giving away of the knee is one of the clinical presentation. This is because of the weakness of quadriceps muscle. Femoral nerve tension test. If we perform femoral nerve tension test, there will be tingling and numbness over the L2, L3, L4 dermatome level which may indicate the impingement or compression of the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve tension test also called as femoral nerve stretch test. It is used to screen for sensitivity possibly related to nerve root impingements that is femoral nerve impingement. It was first described by Wasserman in 1990. So how can we manage this uh, femoral nerve injury? The main goal of physical management are to maintain strength of the muscles to prevent muscle weakness and atrophy. Sensory loss will be present therefore we have to stimulate the sensory function of the nerve. Stiffness and tightness may be some of the complications of femoral nerve injury. Stiffness of the knee joint and the hip joint because of lack of mobility tightness of the iliopsoas or hamstrings or quadricep muscles may be present in long term injury. So prevent stiffness and tightness. We can perform stretching of the muscles, passive range of motion exercises and mobilizations. For pain, massage has shown to be helpful which we have already discussed in upper limb nerve injury. So massage, tense, low level laser therapy and relaxation therapy are some of the techniques to reduce pain. For sensory function, we have to introduce sensory stimulation by pinching or tapping, brushing, icing, etc. For buckling of the knee, which is due to weakness of the quadriceps, so patient while walking may experience buckling of the knee. Therefore, knee bracing is important to prevent further injury to the knee joint. For reducing stiffness at the knee joint or at the hip joint, passive range of motion exercises and mobilizations are some of the important techniques which we can use as a physiotherapy management for reducing stiffness. Stiffness may occur because of the reduction in the range of motion or because of the tightness of the structures around the joint. This will be a long term complication of nerve injury. Strengthening program can be based on MMT finding which we already know that if it is MMT grade 2 we can use suspension therapy if it is 2 plus active assisted range of motion exercises and beyond. So suspension therapy for quadriceps can be done in side lying position whereas active assisted range of motion should be given in sitting position. All the other strengthening exercises above grade 3 should be given in sitting position where the patient will be extending the knee against the gravity. For flexors of the hip joint if it is involved we should concentrate on applying weights against the flexion of the hip. For strengthening knee extensors that is quadriceps we should apply weight in such a way that it should be acting against the knee extension. If the MMT grade is below 2 Passive range of motion exercises and muscle stimulation will be the primary treatment methods. Once the patient regains quadriceps function, isometric and isotonic exercises are advised. So in isometric exercises, we will place the towel roll below the knee joint and ask the patient to contract the quadriceps muscle while focusing on compressing the towel below the knee joint. So once the patient is able to perform isotonic exercises, we will introduce patient to progressive resistance exercises with TheraBend or weights. Next important lower limb nerve injury is the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh injury. 
which is also called as Meralgia Parasthetica. So this Meralgia Parasthetica is because of the impingement of the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh which passes below the inguinal ligament. So this lateral cutaneous nerve of the, nerve of the thigh is a sensory nerve supplying to the lateral part of the thigh. So main causes are because of the inguinal ligament which compresses the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh on the pelvis bone. Other causes could be wearing of tight trousers or belts, obesity, pregnancy, etc. So clinical presentation, there will be sensory impairments such as pain, burning, numbness over the front and outside of the thigh that is lateral aspect of the thigh. Sensitivity to light touch over the outer side of the thigh or lateral side of the thigh will be present. Increased symptoms when wearing tight belts or work belts or tight waist clothes. When we perform pelvic compression test, there will be positive sign where there will be increased numbness and paresthesia over the lateral aspect of the thigh. Tenal sign will be, pre will be present. When we tap below the inguinal ligament, there will be tingling and numbness increased over the lateral aspect of the thigh. Direct pressure with a finger over the inguinal ligament will also increase the symptom. Managements are to avoid using tight fitting clothing or belts. If the patient is obese or if there is a recent weight gain, then weight loss programs may be recommended. Stretching of the muscles, especially the tensor fascia lata, which lies lateral to the thigh, which is a lateral muscle of the thigh, it has to be stretched. Studies have shown that the stretching of the tensor fascia lata has shown positive result in my myalgia paresthetica. Soft tissue therapy such as active release technique or deep tissue massage may provide relief of symptoms. Tense, nerve gliding, ultrasound, application of cryotherapy or cold packs and kinesio taping also helps in reduction of the symptoms.